How's it going, everyone? Welcome to our fourth episode of Project Skyfall, Kevin's attempt to build an RC skydiver. Why, you might be asking? I don't really know. Nah, <laughs> it's going to be a challenge, and it is a challenge. It's fun learning new things, which is should be everyone's life goal, is just to keep on learning. So that's what we're doing. And in this episode, this video, it's all about the parachutes. Oh, yeah. And not just any parachute, not like the round parachutes you're probably used to building for your model rockets or whatever have you, or your GI Joes as a kid. We're talking Ram Air style. This is the kind of parachutes, the mattress looking parachutes that skydivers use to jump with, as well as SpaceX to uh, catch their fairings or at least splash them down in the ocean, and Electron Rocket to recover their bo uh, boosters in the future. So that's what this week's video is all about, and uh, it was quite the challenge. Let's get right into it. And of course, taking on a project of this big, I know we had our blueprints for the very first episode for the overall project, but we're breaking this, this project down into smaller little projects, and this is the parachute project. So we made blueprints for our parachute. Now, of course, I didn't make these. I would never be this good of an artist, but I did find these, and they were quite helpful as I was building my Ram Air parachute. And uh, you might notice that it's a little complicated, a lot of parts to it. What you're looking at is a seven cell parachute. Each little slotted section is a half cell, so there's 14 of them. And that's what I decided to base my own little RC parachute on. Here's an inside view of the canopy. That kind of shows you the ribs that separate the cells where tr pockets of air are trapped to inflate the thing. And they have little holes in those ribs. They're called vents that allow air to flow through each cell and keep all of them symmetrically inflated. The suspension lines run through the bottom layer of the parachute and connect and are sewn into those ribs. And then the top part of the canopy is connected to the bottom part of the canopy at the tail end. They're just sewn together. And here's a side view or a profile view of the rig. The suspension lines run down from the canopy and connect at the top of the risers. There's four of them, two for the front set of lines and two for the back. The two front suspension lines are the A and B lines, and the back ones are the C and D. And at the very tail of the canopy, you have the, the toggle lines, the steering lines. And for those of you that are really good at paying attention to details, you might have noticed that the B lines and the C lines are attached to the D lines. Now, on the one I made, it's the same way, except the C line is continuous and the D line connects to the C line. It just happened to be the way it turned out. And so to do this thing, I ordered a few different colors of fabric to make the canopy out of. This is a special type of nylon fabric. It's called ripstop nylon. It is the exact same parachute material you'll find in any professional parachute maker. It's actually my first time working with this material myself. I mean, I've obviously jumped with it in real life, but I've never purchased it myself and made it for my quote unquote toy parachutes. And what makes it ripstop is that you can't see in this video, but there are actually grids of stitches sewn throughout the entire material. And I would say each little grid or little tile that's stitched out in it is only about a couple millimeters wide. So if it were to puncture or rip inside a certain little grid, the stitching stops the material from ripping further. And it actually works really well, which is important, of course, because you don't want your parachute to tear up on you while you're jumping. And this makes the supersonic parachutes that, you know, the rocket industry uses that much tougher because the type of uh, ripstop nylon material I'm using would not hold up. It's just not that good. But stopping that tear is why those types of high speed shoots are so hard to make. And so the first thing I did is I took my packet of test nylon, the gray looking thing. I didn't really like the color when I received it. I thought it looked better online. So I was like, well, I'll just turn this into my, my test material because I was going to originally make a jumpsuit out of this stuff for the skydiver but after i made it i was like that'd be too hard to do with his oddly shaped body and it'd just be better off if i painted him that way i could just easily more easily get to his avionics inside of him by unscrewing those panels so now now that i no longer really needed the material i thought well i might as well use it to test out how big exactly i want this parachute to be i could have measured it to scale but i decided to just kind of cut corners on that and kind of eyeballed it because i'm pretty used to seeing how big canopies are compared to actual people. So I came out to about six square feet of material work looks just fine. Now what you're looking at here is a little bit more square than it turned out to be because when I started cutting it, I just used those little stitch grids as a guide, but turned out they didn't cut this material themselves for shipping uh, evenly. So after I got done cutting it how I wanted it, the, the top and bottom materials didn't match up correctly because I went off their stitching instead of off of doing measurements which really sucks. So it ended up being a little bit more rectangular than, than the square 
I would say more like a wing than a square parachute, but still will achieve my purpose here. So the white is the top part of the chute and the neon green is the bottom. So I, I finally got the two matched up. It took me forever. I think it took me a solid like evening's work. Next came probably the toughest part of this entire parachute project here is making the ribs. Those vertical sections that go into the canopy and make separate pockets so air can get trapped in those and inflate the thing. So that's what this black material is used for. And the first thing I had to do was measure out how long I needed them and how tall or vertical they needed to go. So here we are with the top and bottom parts of the canopy as well as just the raw ribs cut out but still need to be more shaped for our purpose here. But before I get any further in the material part, next I had to educate myself on how to use a sewing machine because I've always I've learned how to hand sew when I was like six years old from a family friend, just an old grandma type. And although we've had sewing machines growing up and my mom now owns an embroidery kind of online store, I never learned how to use one. And apparently Singer is a really great, <laughs> a great sewing machine. And this was actually given to my given to my wife, the lawyer wife, from my mother. Uh, like for a birthday last year or for Christmas or something. I don't really remember why. And I have used sewing machines in the past, but very sparingly. And it was I was never really good at it. I'd always get the tension wrong or whatever. But this time I decided to really try to learn this, the, the skill. And I'm really glad I did because it turned out to be a lot of fun. I really enjoyed using the sewing machine. Maybe it's because hand sewing, just I know how monotonous, how long it takes to do it. And it's and I always thought that I could stitch better than what I could do on a sewing machine, but sewing machines are actually really good. <laughs> they do a really great job as long as you get that tension right. So first I decided to test what I learned on some test material and I used different stitch patterns, which is also a nice feature that a sewing machine can give you. They can give you a straight line stitch with close stitches together or farther apart, or they can do zigzag. And I ended up using both of those the straight and the uh, zigzag here and it holds up really well. So now that I got my sewing skills down, next was to measure out how far apart those ribs are going to be. Again, there are 14 uh, half cells, so seven cells total, but 14 half cells. Uh, so there'd be 15 ribs total if you count the two on the ends, 13 within the canopy and two ribs on the end. And then once that was all taken care of, next was shaping those ribs. So first I got a pretty thick piece of cardboard, cut out the, the, the stencil, so to speak. So I could kind of assembly line these things like Elon and Starship. Of course, I also had to cut out those valves as well. Make sure we can get that air to cross feed through the ribs and inflate all the cells evenly. And this is what a finished rib looks like before it gets sewn into the, into the canopy. It took quite a bit of time to make these and cut these out. I would say a solid day's work. And here's my first official stitching with the uh, sewing machine. Stitching down that first rib right on the end of the chute. And I made two passes with the sewing machine when stitching these down just to make sure they were double reinforced. And then on we went to the next one and the one after that and the next one until we totaled up 15. These are all the ribs that have the valves in them connected to the bottom part of the canopy, the, the neon green part. And this is the end rib that doesn't need any valves in it connected to a stabilizer that's on the bottom here, that little bottom flat part that will connect to uh, a couple of suspension lines. Just keeps the canopy from oscillating. So here we go. This is the entire bottom part of the canopy with all the ribs and the two side stabilizers attached as well. Next came adding suspension lines. And this part was the part that required some trigonometry. Not my thing. Love science, hate math. Makes me sick that they're related. And for those of you who have ever went skydiving or paragliding or power paragliding, you know that these canopies, these canopy suspension lines are color coded. That's just because there's quite a few of them and they're e and each color is a specific length because they go in a specific spot on the canopy. You want your front lines a little bit shorter than your back line so you get that angle of attack with your canopy like a wing. That way you can get that correct airflow around your canopy, pick up that speed and get some lift. And I never made a parachute before that connected certain lines to other lines. Usually I just have each line run straight to the risers, but like we looked at earlier with the blueprints, the B lines connect to the A lines and, and my D lines connect to my C lines. And that's where the trigonometry really comes in because you got to measure out the length of those, those other lines because they don't run all the way to the risers. And of course, those main lines are running at an angle to the center of the canopy 
you know, maybe two to three feet down where the skydiver hangs. So this is the diagram I kind of made, the color-coded diagram I made with certain lengths on it. And and uh, it ended up being a lot more jumbled up by the time I was finished with a whole bunch of numbers from the math I was trying to do. And even though the parachute's made of a real ripstop nylon fabric that's really used in real life for parachutes, the the string I used for sewing it and these suspension lines are not made of the right material. Normally for stitching, you'd use like a nylon threading, but uh, I didn't want to have to deal with it because for my purposes, we have a we have a light load uh, under our canopy, so we don't need anything as tough that might be harder on a sewing machine or whatever. And our suspension lines are, are made of just kite string. And I learned a little hack growing up working in these kind of do-it-yourself projects that if you light the ends of material on fire and singe them a little bit, it kind of kind of keeps them from fraying. So I cut all my suspension lines and the mark, and I put little dots on them to mark what color they are so I know where they go. Here I am attaching the B lines to the A lines. And after I get all the strings attached and glued together, I glued them to kind of hold them in place and then I knotted them together using square knots so they won't move and they'll hold pretty well. I let them dry a little bit. And then next came sewing down the suspension lines to the bottom of the chute. Now I had to puncture holes through the bottom part of the canopy, the, the green part there, so I could feed the suspension lines through the bottom of the canopy and into the ribs where I sewed them down. And this is what I'm talking about right here. You can see I sewed down a suspension line to the rib, but it feeds through a hole in the bottom of the canopy. It took quite a while to do, a couple days. And this is the bottom half of the canopy after all the lines were sewn into place. Got your A and B lines up here attached to each other. And these are the C and D lines. And these are the toggle lines at the back of the canopy that will steer the parachute. So now that we have our lines attached to the bottom of the canopy, now it's time to attach the bottom of the canopy to the top of the canopy. And I knew going into it that this would be the most tricky part of the entire parachute build. I remember in my last episode, I said I made one of these before. Nothing this sophisticated. I kind of did it all by hand with a different kind of like polyester material or something. This is built like a real parachute. And I wasn't, I was afraid how I was going to sew these ribs into the top part because every every time you sew a rib down it creates less space for you to work so i figured out that i'd have to start off by sewing the top part of the rib at the very back so the smallest part of the rib the top of it to the to the bottom of the top half of the canopy by hand that way it would kind of anchor it in place so i could sew the rest of it down using the sewing machine because if i had to do all these ribs all the way down the width of the parachute by hand it would take me days if not weeks to do i wanted to use a sewing machine as much as possible not only because of time but because i really came to enjoy using the sewing machine and i wanted to so i started at the inside rib and worked my way out paying extreme attention to the part of the canopy i was sewing making sure i wasn't sewing a different part of the canopy to the part i was working on that would suck i did that a couple times just over a few stitches so i was able to cut those stitches and, and unstitch them but uh, also not sewing any any parachute suspension lines into <laughs> into different spots of the canopy. Uh, it was a real big mess to work with, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I managed to keep it kind of organized, even though it probably looks nothing like organization as I'm doing it. I, I just can't imagine doing this on a bigger scale for like the Apollo program or what they do at Airborne when they're working with life-size canopies. That's That's a lot of material to get in the way. So after I got all the lines sewn in place, here I am just being a goofball and testing it, make sure it at least inflates, kind of like a stupid victory dance. And then next came attaching those suspension lines to risers. You want to do this so they're more organized and don't get as easily tangled. And these risers are just made of elastic like band material uh, doubled over on itself. And sandwiched in between the two bands are the suspension lines where I glued them in place before I stitched them down. And we also have these metal rings. That's where they can, uh, these suspension lines connect to the skydiver's body. And then we have metal rings at the top of the front risers where we will feed the toggle lines through so we can steer the parachute. I kind of just improvised as I was making these. I knew it wouldn't be all that difficult to think of something. But I still ended up breaking three needles when I was trying to sew through the glue by hand. I'm lucky I didn't thread my finger. So now that our Ram Air parachute is completely finished, now came the big moment of testing it. And to do this, I just took a scrap block of basswood, kind of 
buffered it with this packing packing peanut thing so just because i was gonna i'm gonna drop this inside i didn't want the thing to fly into the window and crack it or even worse crack my tv so i just kind of installed some of those eyelet screw things into it and then hooked in the risers clamped them down so they wouldn't fall off and then walked up to the second story balcony that overlooks the living room or family room or whatever and let it fly testing in three two one Oh, that was perfect. Here's the bottom angle of a second drop. Very pleased with how this turned out. It would have broken my heart and sent me into severe depression if I did all that work, which took me a solid week of working on this thing, like hours and hours per day. It would have drove me crazy if, it, if I did all that for nothing. But my math checked out. The suspension lines were the length they needed to be. The thing gently flies forward, not too fast. Has a nice glide ratio, nice soft touchdown. Kevin is very happy with these results. So that wraps up this episode. Very relieved this part's done. I knew it was going to be one of the most time con time consuming parts of the of the entire project. But in the next video, we're going to make the container or backpack that the parachute goes into. Now I have limited experience making these things and nothing even close, kind of like the Ram Air parachute, nothing even remotely close to the kind of design I have in mind and how I want to take this. I got my supplies ordered. They should be here in a couple days. Then I'll get started on that. It's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge working with these things. It's going to take a lot of on the spot innovation. We'll see how it turns out. Nothing but positivity on my end. Hopefully I can get it done by next week. If not, it might be the week after. We'll see. We'll see. I, I've been really attacking these projects, uh, really going at it hard, just kind of like I figured I would. But until that time, guys, Godspeed.